If you want the gills, we got the skills right here at 302 Fishing. Good afternoon, welcome back to the channel. If you're brand new or you're still hanging around and you haven't already done so, smash that subscribe button, click that notification bell, give us a big fat thumbs up if you like any of our videos, and of course, drop a comment below. Let's get into this. You're gonna quickly realize that the intro that we're filming right now does not match the video that we shot yesterday. <laughs> In my haste to get out and shoot a fishing episode yesterday, I accidentally deleted the intro that I shot from the way where I was working at to the pond that I was going to because I was at my place of employment rather than home. We want to get on a different body of water this time. But I knew that we were going to possibly get out early if we achieved our goals. Of course we did, and we got out on this body of water. Uh, Friday was not an ideal day to fish, guys. Let's just say that. <laughs> As I told you in the last episode, the weather was supposed to be nice. But Mother Nature, she changed her mind, of course, and it wasn't nice. But I had in my mind what I was going to do. I was going to go out for the bass. I didn't want you guys to see me in all that mill pond all the time, just chasing after the chain pickerel. Uh, I knew that these bass were going to slightly change around because of the, the ever-changing patterns that are going to be coming around temperature-wise uh, for the next few weeks here in March until spring rolls around on the 20th. We do have daylight savings time. It's coming up in about eight days. I think it's the 14th of March. And we're going to have much more lights, and now I can fish after work. Again, which is what exactly I did on this episode here. I got out early, fishing on a Friday, because you normally see me on weekends. So we're gonna have potential having more videos than what you see every week. Could be potentially two or three, you never know. But I got out on this body of water. I had uh, in my mind, we're gonna fish for the bass, and I had a bait that I wanted to use out here, which was gonna be a jig, because uh, I wanted to slow things down, because again, I knew the chill was in the air. So I went out and I got uh, from Bass Pro Shops when I went with Oki on his birthday, and I picked out a black and blue bait, which basically is a bluegill color, and we picked out Boya bait. And the one in particular we picked was the Boo Jig, three-eighths of an ounce, and I picked up a pack. Thank God Guggen's uh, pick, uh, changed up these baits a little bit. I'll talk about that a little bit in the video, but uh, they miniaturized their cracking crawls, and I picked out the Okeechobee crawl, and I slapped that on to the actual jig itself. I was kind of surprised how this video turned out, so I'm gonna stop talking, guys, and we're just gonna get right into the fishing. All right, so we're out here at one of my favorite ponds to come to right near where I work at, and I had to laugh a couple seconds ago because I had a gentleman who literally lives feet away from this pond, and he's asked me, are there big fish in here? And I said, absolutely they are. And I said, there's a couple five pounders that are sitting inside of the water. Since he lives here, I told him what the prime locations were. I even told him to go and subscribe to my channel, and hint, subscribe, <laughs> and uh, go to the one specific video where I caught almost a five pounder right out of this water on a spinnerbait in the fall. So hopefully he checks that out. Hopefully we gain one more subscriber. Hopefully you guys are doing the same and clicking that button. But we got, uh, I told you I said I came out with Crack and Crawl as the uh, moving bait that's gonna be on the back of the Boya bait, which is uh, the boy, Boo Jig. That's what we're using right here. And then the Okeechobee Crawl is what we're attaching to this, so everything matches. Water clarity is excellent out here, guys. It's about 85%, so I'm hopeful that we will definitely get fish off of these two baits combined. So let's get it all wrapped up, man. Let's try to make something happen. All right, as I tie this up, I love when I come to so many communities, man. I just get all these strange looks, man. People are like, what's that on his chest? What's he doing here? Is that guy going to be fishing? Is he taking it home? <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun of it all, guys, just to get those uh, stairs. But uh, for the most part, right here, nobody bothers me. If, if anything, most people are walking their dogs, uh, you know, talking, they're asking me questions. So it's all good, man. When people are receptive and positive, I'll keep coming back. Again, not trying to over, you know, stay my welcome, but coming back in enough uh, uh, frequency where I can try to catch multiple fish uh, throughout the year. But we're going to go ahead and get this... Uh, jig wrapped up here and uh, we'll get ourselves to work here I did one thing I didn't mention here on this uh, particular jig this is uh, on this boo jig there's little rattles that are on here so that tiny little bit of noise might attract these fish in so if you hear it hopefully you can I'm gonna put it to the mic hopefully that little rattle will be enough to entice along with the uh, movement of that crawl 12 pound test, Trilene Berkeley, XL Smooth on the end. Got my nice uh, Veritas rod by Abu Garcia. And uh, I think I have a loose speed spool on the end of my rod here, guys. Again, I want to spend a whole bunch of time talking about uh, you know equipment and everything else since we do have a very short period of time. Again, it is cold. You can see the wind blowing and you can hear it across the mic. Pretty, uh, 
intensely, but we're gonna try to make this magic happen. That's why I went with a heavier jig uh, on this uh, particular episode. I do really like the fact that Guggen Bait, again, I'm not sponsored or endorsed by them. I love the fact that they made these things much smaller so they get onto these baits and it's nice and compact. So you can see how it is like that. Because again, you don't want anything super large and bulky when you're fishing in the winter, man. You want just, just a small enough morsel that these fish will go ahead and go after this bait. Because sometimes they don't want to go for a big meal. They want to sometimes go for that small meal. But uh, we'll get this thing up on here. And uh, again, it is just the perfect size to be right on there. So we're going to let the skirt go down on this. And of course, when it's in the water, you can just barely see the crawls right up underneath of the uh, skirt, which is perfect. Well, let's get the, the bait in the water and try to uh, see if they'll uh, get tricked into biting this thing. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of finesse, man. You can see that wind really blowing hard right there. Look at the water right there and all those ripples. It's gonna, so it's gonna be a tough time trying to work with this bait, but we'll figure it out. It's gonna be more visual than anything else. And hopefully we don't get caught in these uh, chain mesh that's in there. Got a feeling this is gonna be slow going here. <laughs> Goal, like I said, one or two fish. Any more? We're in a bonanza here on a cold day. Come on, baby. See how quickly we can pounce up on these fish. So just to show how crazy the weather pattern is going to be, over the weekend it's going to be probably not even 50 degrees. But three days out of next week, one of them is going to be close to 70 degrees. <laughs> and then the, for a few days after that, back to the 40s. <laughs> but it's going to be up and down. Like I said, March can give us any kind of weather. It's always wild and crazy in Delaware when it comes to uh, uh, Mother Nature acting all wild and everything. In like a lion, out like a lamb. In like a lamb, out like a lion. Could be either way. But we gotta muscle our way through and get to spring here because it's very, very close. As I mentioned, it's on the uh, 20th of March is when spring starts here. But like I said, hopefully we get a giant biting up on here or one of those aggressive little dinks. All right, definitely might have to put my gloves on, man. My fingers are getting numb already. <laughs> and it gives me a chance to go ahead and clear off the junk that's on the uh, end of this line here. A little stick fish going on. As I'm casting this one right, ooh, that was too close. As I'm casting this one right here, gonna talk to you about establishing somewhat of a, like a loose relationship and sometimes tight relationships. Not as much as being best friends, but when you come into these community ponds, uh, I'm always one guy to, to know that when you're walking through and I'm seeing people, I'm always cordial, I'm friendly. Wave to people, say hi to people. If they ask questions, answer them. Because uh, half the times when you're doing that, that gives you the in just to be in here uh, and go ahead and fish in these ponds like that. Every once in a while you're gonna have, uh, you know, the Karens, he or she Karens that come in and just, you know, they're gonna be the cold pricklies and just not be friendly at all, especially when there's no signage around. Sometimes people do that stuff too. But if you can kind of get that loose or tight relationship with those folks, it gives you years of fun to come out here and fish these bodies of water, which is what I do on this location here. Because again, I struck up a conversation and who knows, maybe every time I come out here with that gentleman over here, he's gonna come out and say hi to me. Or he's gonna be excited about the video that I shot in here so now I can share it with his grandkids and they can come out here and get that shared experience of that big one. That's just how it is, guys. You, you gotta learn to walk that fine line when it comes to fishing uh, these tight quarters or people's areas that, that they live and cohabitate in. Because uh, again, I don't wanna go burning locations. I, I wanna come out and fish and I don't wanna have to go further and further just to try to find fish because, you know, people are just being jerks about it. You know what I mean? Fishing wise, that is. 
but that's just my nature that's how i go that's how the oster goes too that's why we're able to get to some of these locations we've only had really one place that we went to where we had permission from a uh, person who's in the neighborhood and we just had one person who randomly just came out and just was out of control and of course i was being a stickler because i knew we were in the right and everything that we were doing but uh, i had to hold my ground but eventually i just said look you know I'm, I'm just gonna have to walk and just count my loss on this one right here because it is what it is i mean i don't want to have my name spread around as being the jerk fisherman and then people are going to see that you know what i mean because that's not truly how i am but uh, that one guy that day he, he kind of ticked me off i'm sure everybody's had that one person that does it to him and you lose your collective stuff but nonetheless, we trudge on and we keep fishing. Again, with the stairs there, that lady gave me a long, long stare. <laughs> Probably thought I was a lunatic for being out here in the cold fishing. But there we go. Oh, there's a fish right there. Definitely picked it up. That was a missed opportunity right there. Hopefully he's still looking at it. Yep, he's still looking at it, he's still got it. He's poking at it. Think he may have it. Think he may have it. There we go. Oh, I totally missed him. He was poking at it. <laughs> it was a small one though. Hopefully you guys would have seen the line being pulled there. But uh, right along this bank line right here is usually where the dink look there's another one banging on me right there. Come on. I can't see if my line is moving or not, but I think it's just little ones messing with it. But right along the shoreline right here is where all the dinks usually hang out and crossed over there and over where that pipe is at is where we tend to get the big ones. But we definitely have some something fussing with this bait here. It's right when it dropped and settled down onto the ground, like two seconds after it was there. But there's appendages, I'm sure, just going just like that, just enough to get that attention going, to get that fish on the end of the line. But they're not fully committing. They're just nip nipping at it and just dropping it out of their mouths. Yep, fish on, got him, got him. There we go. Oh, it's a nice one too, guys. Definitely a nice one, we're gonna hook into him. Definitely a nice one, guys. Oh, she's fighting pretty good. This could be a three or four pounder. She whacked it good, guys. Nice. Big and right off the bat, guys. Big and right off the bat. How about that? How about that? That is a huge bass, guys. A very huge bass. Holy crap. <laughs> Bam! There you go. Big and right off the bat. <laughs> Outstanding, guys. What a way to start off. Let's run over to the car since it's right here. And that fish is clearly feeding. Look at that gut. Holy crap. <laughs> yes, siree. <laughs> Let's get this hook out of his face real quick here. Because I nailed him pretty good outstanding look at the size of this bass wow <laughs> how much is that gonna be <laughs> all right man that was a quick great trip all right we're zeroed out let's get a quick measurement on this bass wow that was a big old bang <laughs> look how small the mouth is Got the lipstick going on. But what we got for weight here? Let me get my glasses off so I can see. Holy crap. 
five pounds, 5.16 pounds, guys. Our first badonka donk for the summer, or for the uh, before spring comes around. <laughs> Wowie, wow. <laughs> All right, Mama, thank you very much. Thank you for feeding up and giving me that big old slam slam. Cold, cold weather, guys. You can get them on the jigs, man. Nice fat bass still rolling around in community ponds. But uh, the theme of this year, guys, big fat green bean bag. That's two in almost a week that we caught outstanding <laughs> let's get this mama going because she is ready to go and she's gone <laughs> I'm heading up the highway, watching an absolutely beautiful sunset go down behind the trees. I fished right to the Alpine Glow, and I wish we could have caught a lot of bass, but we caught one bass, and it was an absolute doozy. A big fat green bean bag, that 5.16 pound largemouth bass, man. What a vision of loveliness that was. <laughs> Again, I was hopeful that we were gonna to try to catch a bunch of fish, but we did not, but that jig definitely produced. I'm glad I picked it. I picked the right bait. And that was the Booyah bait that I picked out, which was the Boo jig, the black and blue, uh, bluegill colors, and of course, that tiny little crack and crawl on the end of that bait. That jig had a little rattle on it, and I think just with the wiggle of the claws and that tiny little rattle brought that mama right on. And I was so happy, man, because when I fished flashed up at the top of uh, that water, man, I was like, holy mess, man, I got me a donkey. But <laughs> I'm so grateful for that fish because it would have been an otherwise miserable episode. I lasted all about maybe an hour and a half because, again, I had thin clothing on and it was dreadfully cold with that wind going on. And, you know, I threw a couple other baits after that, but that was just it, guys. Just a one fish episode. So hopefully you guys would have enjoyed that. I know I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, push that notification bell, guys. Drop a comment below. Hopefully you guys have a great weekend coming up. Hopefully you're catching your giants. And as always, fish on.